everyone. I miss seeing everyone in class. I hope that you will be able to join us for a Zoom lesson on Tuesday and bring whatever you've been working on. In the meantime, I don't know how many people can paint uh, in their place, in their homes, uh, but we can always draw. So I thought, hey, this could be a great time to go over some of the basics and hone those hand-eye hand -eye coordination skills. So one of the little tricks that I learned a long time ago, which has been really helpful, is people say, well, I can't draw a straight line. And it's like, yeah, you probably can. There's so, some tricks to it. So I want to share those with you. One of the tricks is, hey, you put a dot here. Okay, and that's where we're going to start. I hope this black magic marker shows through. So here's the dot. And then I'm going to put a dot here. So when I start to connect the dots, I'm going to look where I want to go as opposed to how I'm getting there. Okay, so I'm going to keep my eyes right on that dot. And instead of moving my wrist a lot, I'm going to try to keep my wrist pretty stable, pretty straight. Kind of lay it right there on the paper. And I'm going to try and pull with my whole arm. So we're going to see how I do. Okay, so here I am, and I'm looking at that dot, and I am pulling over. Had a little rough start, but let's try that again. Okay, so I'm here on the side. I'm looking where I want to go, and not, not bad, okay? Try that. Try making the dots. Try moving your whole arm. So you're starting here, and then you're looking where you want to go. Okay. And then start moving those dots around. So you have a horizontal, you have a vertical. Let's go with a diagonal. Okay. And you're playing with this. This is like doodling. You can do it while you're watching TV. You can do it with a pencil. You can do it with a pen. I almost feel like Dr. Seuss. You can do it again. But if you have... a uh, Newspaper. You have a pen? Watching TV? Start making the dots. And it really holds your hand-eye coordination because drawing is really about connecting the dots. It's about lines. So that is a fun little thing to do. The other uh, thing you can play around with, sometimes when you're making a circle, you know, you can almost use, I'm putting my elbow down here, so you can almost use your arm like a compass. Okay, but that doesn't always work. However, you can start doing little lines. And just, you know, again, I am coming out from my wrist, and I'm moving it around a little bit, and just doing a lot of, like, a little connecting. And just playing with it. Okay? And you don't have to make anything. You're just making shapes. Because actually lines are really important. We convey a lot of emotions through lines. We have a lot of association with lines. So if I wanted to create a painting and I wanted that painting to have a really peaceful feeling, probably would do a rectangle that was a little bit wider than it was tall. And I would probably put a horizontal line there. And up here could be the sky, and down here could be a field. Up here could be the sky, that could be the ocean. But usually that sort of composition, that horizontal composition, gives us a feeling of peace. Okay, they, they say that, you know, back in the day when we were living on the plains, if we were out on a field, we could see far, far in front of us. There was a feeling of peace, tranquility, and those horizontal lines bring us that, remind us of that. Now, suppose we want a little bit more action. What line kind of gives us a feeling of action? That would be a diagonal line. And if we had a person 
on this diagonal line. It would look like they were climbing up and that would take a lot of effort. If this were a field and we had a person here, they would just kind of be moseying along. It wouldn't require that much effort. Okay, But we had somebody at the top of the hill and they had on skis. Whoa, they would have a lot of movement. And oftentimes, even with those lines behind us, gives us on the diagonal that feeling of movement. To give you an example of that, I don't know who did these paintings, uh, but I really like them, and they're simplistic. But they show you the tranquility of that horizontal line. Isn't that wonderful? She could be on a balcony looking up at the sky. She could be on a boat. There's just this peacefulness to it. A stillness, contemplative. Okay, here, diagonal lines. You know, we have the hill, and we have our hair, and you can just feel that motion. So I think that's kind of fun. So another thing to consider through uh, when we're thinking about composition is broken sinister. Okay, and that is based on diagonal lines as well, because. So let's say we have a painting and we're taking the eye to someplace pleasant, okay? So since we read from left to right, we associate pleasantness or predictability with motion that goes from left to right. If we want to do something that's a little bit more disturbing, sometimes we'll have that diagonal be from right to left. And to give you an example of that, I'm going to share with you one of Vincent's paintings. Okay, and this is how he actually painted it in a Baroque composition on top. Okay, and you know, it's still a mysterious, wonderful feeling, but look at it when you switch it around, which I did on the computer, and turn it into a sinister composition. Okay, isn't that amazing? So I'm just share that with you. So these are things as you're thinking about your paintings and what you want to say at home to take into consideration so they end up saying what you want them to say. Um, I just finished a portrait, a commissioned portrait, and I used that. The, the um, woman that I painted is a writer, and she wanted some of her old, younger selves in the background, but she wanted to have a classical kind of Rembrandt-y feeling. So what I did is I'm going to get it is um, the glare in here is a little tough. Okay, so here we go. I have, come here, her younger selves and herself and then her youngest self coming up on that Baroque angle. And I even have the steam from the coffee com coming up to that Baroque angle. So you can see how important that is because we certainly want that to be pleasant. She wants to like herself and feel good about herself and her, her younger selves. So there you have that. Also, whenever we incorporate a circular kind of feel into our composition, and we'll go over this in more detail as well, um, that gives us a feeling of warmth, okay? A feeling of warmth, being held. As a matter of fact, if we gave ourselves a hug right now, they've already done studies where that feels good. So, those sorts of motions, that composition, we're, we're sharing that in our paintings. It's, say, it's saying what hopefully we wanted to say. So, I look forward to seeing everyone on Tuesday. I hope everyone's staying safe and well. And um, take the best care of yourself. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.